Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, for, for joining me. So in just a couple of hours, this is actually going to happen a few steps from where we are. It's solemn. It's grave. We've heard all those words from you. What message, after all of this, do you want Americans to take away from what they see on the floor? Well, I'd like Americans to recognize that the president um, betrayed their trust, abused the power of his office uh, to help cheat in an election, the next election, uh, and sacrificed our national security to do so. And that is not something that we can accept in the office of the presidency. And if we accept it in this president, because some people share the same party with the president, uh, then we're going to have to admit of a level of corruption in that office um, for all future presidents. And so there's a lot at stake here in what we do today, uh, both for today and for the future. So after this, it's going to go down this hallway over to the Senate side. Will you be a House manager presenting your case to the Senate during the trial? Well, that'll be up to the Speaker to decide. Uh, she has made no announcements of her thinking. Have you um, heard from her about it? Uh, well, I, I'm not going to... I know you don't want to get ahead of her, but I, 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 I talked certainly about do it. not want to get ahead of her. Um, <laughs> It will be her decision. We certainly talked about the issue of House managers, um, but uh, that will be a judgment call for her to make, and that's why she uh, she's the speaker. Speaking of the speaker, I'm sure you saw the uh, multi-page letter that the president wrote to her yesterday saying a lot of things, including uh, that what you are doing is declaring an open war on democracy uh, with this impeachment vote. The speaker called it sick. What's your reaction? Uh, you know, it is a long, angry, rambling letter of someone who appears not well, and I'm not sure any other way to describe it. Um, but look, the president wants to think that the impeachment provision which the founders put in the Constitution is somehow unconstitutional. That makes no sense whatsoever. It was a constitutional remedy meant for a president like him, who put his personal interests over the interest of the nation. Uh, but this president believes that he is the state, that he can do no wrong, that under Article 2, as he has said, he can do anything he, that he wants. Well, he can't. He's not the king. He's not our ruler. Uh, he is an elected president who can be removed for abusing his power, so, and that he has done. So on that note, uh, the president in the Oval Office attacked you directly. He was sitting next to uh, the president of Guatemala. He lamented that uh, you can't be prosecuted for telling the what you call parody uh, of the July 25th phone call. Here's what he said. He said, in Guatemala, they handle things much tougher than that. Is that a threat? I think that's what he intended it to be. Uh, this is a president, after all, who has said of people who blow the whistle on him that they're traitors and spies and should be treated as traitors and spies used to be treated. We used to execute traitors and spies. Uh, so this is not a president above threatening anyone who gets in his way, anyone who stands up to him. Um, Do you think jail is really what he meant? I, no, I, I think the, the, um, the undertone is very much a, a reference to Guatemala's violent uh, history. Um, but look, he is not going to intimidate me. Um, and thankfully, we had courageous public service servants come and testify uh, who were not intimidated by him either. They did their constitutional duty. I'm going to do mine. Uh, I took an oath as well. And um, I'm sorry, what do, when you say violent history, can you just expand on what you mean by that? How, how did you take what the president said as um, a potential call to violence? Well, I, I think it was quite deliberately designed to be a threat. Um, and this is the president's modus operandi. Uh, I'm not the first person he's made a veiled threat about. I won't be the last. Um, but this is precisely the kind of conduct Americans should not accept in the Oval Office. Uh, he has so debased that office with his threats and his temper tantrums, but, but more to the point, he has sacrificed our national security by withholding so, military aid from an ally at war so that he could get help in cheating in the next election. That is what brings us to this day. So there um, was a report in the Washington Post that you sent a letter to Vice President Mike Pence and you want to declassify some of the testimony from his aides. And the Post reports that your letter says that uh, there are profound questions raised about the vice president's knowledge of the president's actions in Ukraine. Do you have evidence that the vice president uh, did something that was untoward or even inappropriate or illegal? Well, Mr. Sondland testified that he informed the vice president uh, at that meeting in Warsaw that the aid was being withheld, that the president wanted these investigations, and that the two were tied. Uh, and he got no visible reaction from the vice president, not a 
you don't know what you're talking about, that couldn't possibly be, what does this mean? None of that, just a silent acknowledgement, if you will. Um, this classified submission goes to the vice president's knowledge uh, of this scheme. Uh, it should be declassified. It has nothing classified in it. Uh, it is not appropriate to classify something because it will um, conceal material that is either embarrassing or incriminating. Uh, if the vice president thinks that his call was perfect, then he should release his call and he should release this classified submission. We've seen the chairman of the Intelligence Committee release classified information before. If he doesn't say yes, will you do it anyway? Um, uh, that is a, a process that has been abused in the past. Um, I would like to see the intelligence community declassify this if the vice president will not. Um, the, uh, one of the questions going forward is whether or not the House will hold the articles of impeachment until the Senate gets its act together on what a trial will look like. Is that a good strategy? Uh, that will be a decision for the speaker uh, if and when to transmit uh, the articles should they pass as we presume that they will today. Um, I have to say I'm deeply concerned by the comments from Mitch McConnell that uh, he had, does not intend to be impartial, that he does not want to hear witnesses, he does not want to see documents, he's not interested uh, in, in finding out uh, the truth. Now, the evidence is already overwhelming, but he's afraid clearly that it will become even more overwhelming. So do you think, given that, it's a good idea to hold on to the articles here until maybe he can be convinced otherwise? Well, I hope that he will engage in a good faith negotiation with Senator Schumer uh, about the nature of the trial mm -hmm. uh, so that the American people get to hear from these witnesses. The overwhelming majority of Americans want to hear from people like Bolton and Mulvaney. They want documents from the State Department to be and are revealed. Holding the articles a potential uh, point of leverage for you? Well, that, that'll be a decision for the leadership what to make. What do you think strategically? Could uh, it be? I don't know the answer, uh, but I, I do know this. Um, there are witnesses that have knowledge. Um, there are witnesses like John Bolton that the Senate should hear from. Mm -hmm. uh, there are documents, many of them deeply incriminating, that should be released by the State Department and the Office of Management and Budget. And the senators of both parties should want that evidence to come to light. If they're doing their constitutional duty, they should want that evidence to come to light. So we, speaking of coming to light, we have now in the last week seen uh, that there are big problems in the FISA courts, the court that um, approves secret uh, spying or surveillance, whatever you want to call it. Will you, as chairman of the Intelligence Committee, start to work on reforming that very important court? Yes, and we'll have an opportunity to do so the, with the renewals of the FISA legislation, uh, but also given the decision by the FBI director, which I think is, is absolutely not only appropriate but necessary, to implement the recommendations of the inspector general. So there are real reforms. The letter um, opinion issued by the FISA court, uh, which was scathing and appropriately so, uh, calls on the FBI and the Department of Justice to reform the process so that when there are proceedings like this in the future, the court can have confidence that it's getting the full information. You've been one of the faces of this whole process. Given that, how do you want history, which is going to be made today, to remember you and how you handled yourself and, and the things that you said and did? Well, I, I think about this a lot. Uh, not so much from the perspective of history, I guess, but from the perspective of uh, whenever when the day comes, I have grandkids and they want to know what did, what did grandfather do when he was in the Congress. Uh, I want them to be proud of what I did. I want them to know that when we had a deeply unethical man running the country, that uh, their grandfather stood up to him. And um, I feel uh, privileged only in one respect during this dark time, that I'm in a position where I can make a difference when I think our democracy is deeply at risk. Mr. Chairman, thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you. I really appreciate it.